Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to get option chains via the Trader API. With the function I'm going to be covering, we should be able to get various types of option strategies, excluding the last four. It seems that the API is not recognizing strategies involving three or more legs. I'm not sure if they're going to be updating their API to include these last four. And also the analytical, as we will go over later down the script, which lets you modify the underlying price, the volatility, the interest rate, and the number of days to expiration. And it should return the theoretical pricing for the option options but as of today's date it seems that the API is not returning the correct data so again I'm not sure if they're going to be updating that in the future and if they do I'll accommodate for that in order to get the option chains we need a couple of things you need to insert your app key your secret code and we're also going to need your current access token via this binary file which should have generated from the previous script I went over called CS authentication and we're also going to bring in the check access token function created in that script I didn't change anything so I just copied and pasted in here which will update our access token and and update it if it's expired. I won't be going over this function as it's available in the previous script. Just make sure that you have your tokens and your refresh token hasn't expired. Now for the actual function to bring in option chains, there's quite a few parameters. So the first parameter is the underlying symbol, which is required via the API. We have the contract type, whether you just want the call portion, the put portion, or all. The number of strikes to return, whether above or below the at the money price. And this depends on the range, which you can also include, which is in the money, near the money, or out of the money. We also have a flag to include the underlying quote, the strategy that you want to call. And again, for this function, we are able to get single and basically any other strategy that involves two legs except for the role. And if they update their API, I'll go ahead and update the function to include these last four. We also have the interval or the strike width if you're returning any spreads. If you want to get specific, you could also insert the strike. We have the range, which I already covered, the from and to dates for the expiration. They also have a feature where you can apply for the analytical strategy, which you can change the volatility the underlying price, the interest rate, and the days to expiration. But as of today's date, the API is not returning the theoretical pricing when modifying these parameters. But I left them in there in case they do end up updating their API because it seems like a cool feature to have. We also have the expiration month, but I've noticed that if you try and request any spreads, this feature might not work. What you can do instead is set the from and to dates, but it does work if you're using the single strategy, as we will see later down the script. They also have these last two parameters, which the API doesn't really cover. So if you know what these are, please let us know in the comments. So we're going to bring in all of these parameters and we're going to set all of them to null except for the underlying symbol. And depending on what the user enters, it's going to return the correct URL for our request. So let's go ahead and open up this function. So depending on what the user enters, we will build our URL according to the parameters. Otherwise, if they're null, it'll go ahead and skip over them. Once we have our URL built, we're going to check our access token and it will go ahead and auto update it if needed. We're going to send our get request. If the status code for the page is 200, it'll go ahead and extract all the options. Otherwise, it'll go ahead and flag that it failed. It'll return the page status code. So as long as it's 200, it's going to extract the content from the page and return it into table. Now it's going to go through a series of checks. So the first one is the user wants to include the underlying quote. It's going to go ahead and extract that from our content. Otherwise, it'll skip over it. Also, if the user is requesting calls only or puts only, so there's a section for calls and there's also a section for puts. And of course, if the user enters all for the contract type, it'll extract both the calls and the puts. So all we're doing in these blocks are extracting the data and returning it as a data frame. So for this section, we have all the calls, same thing for the puts. It'll step in through the content and return it as a data frame. If the user requests all, which we see in this following block here, we're gonna row bind our calls and our puts. And if the user request to include the underlying quote, we're going to go ahead and combine all of our options data with the underlying data, otherwise just return it as it is. And the following two blocks are essentially the same thing, but are for calls only and puts only. It'll go through that series of checks and include the underlying quote if needed. Next, we're going to list all of our columns that should be numeric. So it'll go ahead and extract the location of each of these columns, and we're going to pass them into this function, which is going to round all these numeric columns to four decimal places. We're also going to fix our timestamps and return them as character so we need to update these six timestamps now if you're requesting spreads it will step into this block which is going to extract all the options and return them as a data frame the list names are different when requiring spreads but it's going to follow the same approach as we have in the block above once we have our data frame we're going to list all the columns that need to be converted as numeric and using the same approach as the code above we're going to list the locations and round everything to four decimal places fix our timestamps and attach the underlying quote if the user specified it and last 
lastly, returning the final version of our data frame. And we also want to include the get date, which is just the current date, and removing any empty columns and returning the final version of the table. So let's go ahead and minimize it and show you some examples. The fields required to get option chains are these four. So we need the underlying symbol, the strategy type, the contract type, and whether or not to include the underlying quote. So I ran through nine examples here. This first version will get all the options for Tesla. We want to include the underlying quote, and we're going to set the expiration month to all. So use this version if you want to extract all the option chains for the specific underlying symbol. And if we open up options one, so we have 78 columns and 3,600 entries. And just to make sure we can type in puts here, and for the put side, we have half as many entries. So it looks like we were able to retrieve all of the options for Tesla. Now for the second example, we're going to retrieve all the verticals for the SPY, having a $5 width on the call side that are out of the money and return a maximum of seven entries between these specific dates. So if we take a look at options two, we have 66 entries. And whenever you request spreads, we'll have the primary leg and the secondary leg. So just to verify, we have the 580 put. And if we scroll to the right and find the secondary leg, we see that it's a 485 put. So indeed, we have a $5 width. Now, if you keep scrolling, you'll find the strategy, which lists the Greeks and the mark price for that vertical. We have the strategy strikes, the bid and the ask, the mark, and all of the Greeks. It's also going to list the expiration month, the year, and the day, the number of days to expiration, along with the date of retrieval. So let's run through another example. For the option three, we're going to request all the puts expiring in April. So let's check out options three. We have 61 entries, and we see that these are all on the put side, and the expiration should all be in April, which is correct. For the next one on the list, we're going to retrieve the covered strategy on the call side. For Rivian, we're including the underlying quote, and we only want those that are out of the money. So if we check out options four, all of these are calls. We see that these are all out of the money. If you're seeking the strategy, it may be a good idea to include the underlying quote because it'll only list the primary leg. The secondary leg would just be the stock. So if we go all the way to the right, we should see the underlying quote and anything having a U in front of it pertains to the underlying, which should be an additional 20 something columns. So let's go to the next example. We're going to request Home Depot straddles. We're going to set the contract type to all. We don't want to include the underlying quote and we want all options expiring between these two dates. So let's check out options number five. So again, we should see the primary leg and the secondary leg. Our next example is going to return strangles. And for the strangles, we can include the interval. So these should be 10 strikes apart between these two dates. So we click on option six. So we have the 390 call. And if we check out the secondary leg, these are the 380s. So it looks like it is retrieving the data correctly. Now for the next example, we want to retrieve all calendar options for Amazon on the call side that are near the money. And we only want the first three. So for option number seven, we have a total of six entries. And I've noticed that if you don't set the from and to dates, it's just going to grab the first two expiration dates. So as you see, we have the 426 calls. And for the next expiration, they're using the 5-3. So it may be a good idea to set the from and to dates. And for options number eight, we can get really specific. So we want Google options, the first strike on the put side that are near the money. And we're going to set our to date to 510. So if we click on that data frame, we only have three options and it returned one for each of these expirations. Now I wanted to use the analytical strategy, but as you will see from our request for options nine, we kept everything the same except for the strategy. And we're also going to add the underlying price, which is hypothetical and the volatility. But as we will see from option number nine, we have the same mark as our previous data frame, which are these values here. I'm assuming that they changed the theoretical price and the theoretical volatility, but from the updated one, the only thing that changed was the theoretical volatility. So we have the same theoretical option value as the previous. The only thing that changed was the volatility. So we have 29. So I changed it to the one that we passed in. I didn't see any other change except for that one. So I'm not sure they're going to open up this feature. But if they do update it, just make sure that you set it up the way I have it here. For the analytical, you could also modify the dates to expiration and the interest rate. So with that, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.